<clears throat> okay, so we use the commands docker run, docker pull, docker run to run a container, docker pull to pull the image, docker create network, we created networks, and then we had a Apache website running on my physical host and we tried to connect that to a Docker machine, the Docker MariaDB. We are managing that MariaDB through PHP Madmin and for that we have again created a container. Now what uh, we should try to do is we had a website at cd var ww and the code is placed in this html file so what is in the html it is okay move maria david dot back no it's there is a little bit like Sorry? Okay, increase the size. Yeah. Is it good? Yeah? Yes, yeah, Jimmy. Okay. So we have a website, MariaDB, uh, I mean, index.php is our page. And in that index of dot php is my little code that just connects to our database so this code can be very huge and we do it the same way like we are packing what we want to do is uh, yesterday we, we we downloaded the mariadb container we created our database and we downloaded the php mic admin container so now we are making our own container so that we can push our code inside that container. And when we uh, run that container, our website is running. So what we do is, I have already created a Docker file and we create this Docker file with this name, capital D, O C K E R F I L E. We cannot change it. We cannot use a small Docker file because it is the standard Docker file name. So, okay. from this image, actually, this is a PHP container available on Docker Hub. And this PHP container basically has Apache inside it and also configured to run the PHP websites. So we ran uh, some command inside that I want to also run MySQL I and I want to copy whatever is on my HTML folder to var www html this is inside container directory this is my host physical directory where my code is available what i can further do is if we want i can run mkdir let's say if i want to have something under var www html and I want to have optional something. So I can create a directory and I can copy from again my, or I can give the full path var www opt to this path so i can create a directory 
I can co uh, copy the content of that directory to my inside my Docker. Now I am copying dot whatever is in the HTML to the var www HTML directory already present in the container. Okay. So yes. So that's how we tell our Docker file what we want to do. We write that up and there is a command docker build minus t, okay. I am creating my container with a p a c h e p h p. This is my container name or sorry, the image name because I am creating an image so that I can run a container from this image. And let's say this is version 1.0. When I will press enter, hmm. sorry, uh, I have not told that the Docker file is placed at already this directory. So what we can do is either uh, give the full path or we do the dot here. Dot means we are sitting in the same directory and Docker file is also present in this directory because it will, the, the build command will search for this Docker file, this Docker file. So it is already present here in the same directory. So if I do it, our image is building and let's wait for it. And it is done. Docker IMAGES. So our Apache PHP with tag 1.0 is available. in our local repository at our local host. So what we can do now is we can run docker run minus p 80 colon 80 minus d Apache PHP. Okay, sorry, control C because I have version. So we, if we, we don't give the version, it will always take latest as the tag. So we don't have any latest tag. So 1.0 is our uh, tag version. Now I will curl local host port 80 and you can see i am connecting to the website through my docker and it is saying connection refused in var ww blah 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 because we have not uh, created the uh, maria db container we have not created a test database and we have not uh, done any connection settings I can show you that service HTTPD is not there. And we have created our website and we have run this uh, website under our Docker container. And if I show you PS and if I Docker stop, Okay, I have to stop this container and if I do the curl again, connection refused. So there is nothing on port number 80. So it means we have successfully 
deployed our website through the container and it is our custom website it is our custom application any confusion in this because then we will be connecting it to the database and we will have complete uh, apache php mysql everything in my uh, yaml file so mostin and everybody is yeah it's good yes yes yeah just, we, we are just we have just tagged a small index yeah. index page and that page will connect to uh, our database okay what's the full meaning of curl oh curl sorry curl is a package uh oh. we can download anything using uh curl from the website like if you want to download something so we do w get if you want uh, w get and the url of the download link so it will get that website whatever is on that page and this is the thing we do the web page testing like local host is our website or i can curl https google.com okay. so it downloaded the web page it downloaded the web page so it so cannot display just... it it cannot display yeah. it properly but it can tell you the i mean it's... what your browser does is it actually takes that content and populate it for you the way the developer has set it so i was doing curl so that i can know that if the port is responding my web content is served or not and it is the easiest easier way i will go to the browser type ip address so why not test it here because everybody knows that what it will display there okay so we created our mariadb.yml yesterday so now we will do a p a c h e and the image is our own a p a c h e p h p tag 1.0 and the container name is apache php that's it What's the mapping value? Okay, I ran this from another file. This is a patch. Yes. Okay, so we have our MariaDB file available with this setting. And now we want to run it. 
so docker compose minus f maria db up minus t Okay, this simple space I mean there was a space issue so it is telling about the context so no I did something wrong where did Apache colon, then my image name Apache PHP, yeah, then my so container name. Okay, this 80, is 80, right? There, yeah. No, Oops. no, no. Yes, this is actually the space. Oh, come on. Insert capital. Insert post. This this is space I I placed extra. So my containers are running in a detached mode. If I do Docker PS, so on 8080, our PHP admin is running. On port 80, our Apache is running. On port 3306, our uh, database is running. Perfect. Uh, Zishan bhai, yes. a small question. So these are the comma uh, codes you're writing. So we will get these codes from the developer, right? We don't need to memorize or by heart. What? The codes you're writing. The YAML files? Uh, yeah, in the VI command, you just uh, in the MariaDB YAML file, yeah. Hey, you will get everything. From Maybe you need to, yeah, you do, from the developer. In the past, the developer used to give you the instructions file. Mm -hmm. Now you will just uh, get this file. You will run it in your environment and you are good Docker to go. Engine. But okay. there may be a problem. You are, you are developing, uh, let's say you are you are on your host. The developer gave you the, you, you pull the Docker file and you try to run it. Mm -hmm. And you have already used, let's say, port 8080 or port 80 or double three zero six. Of course, this will not run and it will pop some error. So at least you should know where to look. If there is any container running, if any container running on the same board. I mean, it will pop you the error, but mm -hmm. you should have some idea how In the the ports are mapped. Yes. So okay. again... We have our website on this server, 192 run double three and port is 80. It is giving us the error. Can you tell me why? Anyone? Habib? Maybe uh, you are. Uh, huh? I think... Why? Why it is giving me error? Is it a MariaDB port? Yes, it's or a Mari. I am, I am connecting with the Maria database through this code. I mean, it mm -hmm. is because, you know, I know that I am using my SQL I construct. So it is telling me that I am not Access is denied. Why the access is denied? We have just created the container which is listing on double three zero six and connection failed. Actually, I, I asked this question. Maybe bridge oh. network. The user is network bridge is missing. The root. Okay. Any other question? Uh, anyone else? 
I mean, I have specifically asked this question because actually I wanted to skip this part. So I was hopeful that everybody knows what we are doing. So I should skip after this, but we cannot skip it. So guys, if you can remember, that we have our database example, which we have to create first, and then we can connect to it. So because the database is not there, example, because in our connection string, we have defined that we have a database, and on database, there are there is a user, and the username is test and yes. the password yeah. to it is abc1234 abc1234 and then check all and one we can do is go don't update we will go here and connect it successfully and now i can tell you that my website my MariaDB and yes, okay. There, there are two things only MariaDB and our PHP code in our toggle. So everything is running inside a container, and we have packed a very small website. Uh, you can do as complex as you want. You can use multiple containers. You can do, uh, you know the requirement of your website. So I know that I only need PHP available and there is some index page which is configured in PHP. If I can do through HTML, I can do it from the HTML, but PHP, I think, I, I don't know if from HTML you can connect to database. I'm not sure. So if I go to Docker, uh, minus F, Maria. D hmm. Oh, my Maria DB not. What's the container name? File name. Maria DB dot email. Do you see the Docker minus F? Why should I taking M A R? Okay. Oh, come on, docker compose minus f, mariadbml down. So it is down. And if I go to the website, So nothing is responding, right? Okay, what we do is, we start that container again. Up minus DD means detached mode. So our container is again up, everything is working. We go to the browser and we test. Again, it is giving me the same error. I told you, and let's log into the PHP my admin. Let's refresh it. Username is root. Data is uh, it is like it is not yes, persistent. Data is not persistent. So our DB is gone. And our user is gone. So now we can go on the board. So I'm stopping the share so that you can go to, uh, you can look at the board. Yeah, we can see the board. 
You can see the board, right? Okay. So now we create the data persistence for the databases. As you see, application is tagged inside and we have no issue with the application. Application is running and you can not connect to the database. So in database or the applications where persistence is required, we do the concept of Docker volumes uh yeah can you see it it is visible enough yes okay so there are three types there are three types of volumes host volumes, anonymous volumes, and the name, uh, sorry? Container volume? Yeah, these are container uh, oh, volumes. Okay. We can, uh, what we can do is we can map, let's say, I mean, the Docker engine is running the containers. The containers are obviously using the CPU from your host machine the RAM from your host machine. And of course the container is residing somewhere. It is taking the, it is writing uh, the logs. It is doing anything that's on your host file system. It has allocated some space on your file system and it is utilizing that. So somehow we should know that this container is taking some place on your hard disk, on your physical box. As a directory. So, as a directory, you have a hardware and you have OS kernel. And then you have your file system. And this container is writing, maybe it is in some var, we will discuss it. So at least we should know that this container is right, at least using some space, but we don't know that space is volatile. We, when we destroy the container, it is gone. So what we want to do is, if we, what we can do is, let's say we can have, maybe we have var in our Apache container, we have var www HTML. Okay var www html is my container directory and i have my home directory let's say in my home mm. i have my user zishan and there is a html directory or on my physical host i have var www html so what we will do is we will map this physical volume inside the container volume we will do the mapping so whatever is written on the container is actually written on this directory or this directory with whatever directory is mapped so when the container is stopped he can access the volume. And started again. When the container is stopped and started again, it will read what this volume on your physical host. And whatever is on that volume, it will be available inside your container. So whenever the container will restart, your data is there. Okay.
so i was discussing it there are three types host volumes and i think we can do the commands or yeah i i i'll uh, tell you in details what host volume is uh on we can go we can go on the screen and we can test it so what how can we do it docker doc or when we do the run command we do minus d minus p so we will do minus v minus v is for volumes and let's say again we will do the host volume path and the docker volume path we will give you we will give the complete path at the host on which we will be copying and pasting the data and this is inside the container where you want that data to go and whatever on that path is written it should be written on this path on your host so we will when using the command line with all other switches we will use the minus v switch so that we can mount a volume so in database uh, i remember the database mariadb or mysql is var lib mysql and there is a folder named data and all the databases go inside this database and the files goes i mean databases go in the data and the remaining file go in the same directory so what we need is we need to persist the data of this complete directory varlib mysql and write it to our own host so that whatever is in the mysql folder it is written on our file and when we stop a container and when we start it again we have this file this content available and it can reload from uh, the, reload the data from this directory any confusion till here no ji shangbe so good okay yeah yeah so persistence is required in many cases i mean maybe you are uh, not pushing the everything to database maybe you are collecting the resumes of people you maybe you are uh, collecting pictures so that need a data should be uh, should not uh, cannot be volatile so then you can uh, mount anything uh, under volumes okay so there is a okay i'm going the, on the board again give me a minute because we see only board yeah we i'm i'm going to the board again because you know we are not practicing what we are not using so this is the doc, uh, this is the host volume types mm -hmm. and there is a anonymous volume type you just do docker run i for t docker run minus v and you tell the docker volume path i mean if you want to do the persistence of this uh path you will write this path here you will not tell the host path and what docker will do is it will generate a hash 
and automatically reserve a volume anonymously for this path. And you don't know the name of it. I mean, you can find your data and you can find your name, but Docker take care of the naming convention and the path. And it will assign a path which is in your, uh, I mean, it depends on your operating system, but for Linux, maybe it is in the uh, var lib Docker volumes. Uh, I can check it on, if you are running Docker or Windows, maybe you have C Docker, if Docker is installed in C. And for Mac, I don't know, I don't have Mac. So another type is named volumes. That is the most utilized. I mean, it is the only utilized, not the most. It is the only way to name your volume. So basically, what is the name volume? Name volume is the mix of two. You tell Docker, okay, reserve the place wherever you want, but you name it according to my naming convention. Uh, are you sharing screen? No, I'm just telling you the theory right now. Okay. okay. So the name volume is, uh, we will do it. You tell the Docker the name of your, that you should mount somewhere, where, uh, I don't care wherever you want to mount, but you should at least name it that it is for my disk container. So let's go and share my screen. Okay. There is my share screen. Docker PS minus A. We have three containers running. Docker compose T. So everything is gone. I have now created to avoid typo errors, which we did uh, last time. So I already created the file. So this is the same MariaDB. It's the same MariaDB environment. It's the same environment. What we did was is just under this environment, because it, this is not an environment variable, so it, it cannot come under an environment variable. It is the main list, like ports, like container name, like image. So it comes under this, the volumes. And the volume name is my SQL data. And the, the Docker, inside Docker path is var lib mysql. The rest is the same, so Okay, we, our image is Apache PHP 1.0. And at the base, I mean, after everything this, on the same level where our services are running, we define this MySQL data name because we can have multiple, uh, containers that can share the same storage. So if we have 10 Apaches running on the front end and all of them are pulling the customer code and they are like taking the pictures or resumes, so they will be placed on the same shared storage. So with you can attach this volume to this container and you can use again this Maybe change the path to your Apache container. But what you will do is that you will 
mount mysql data maybe on not on varlib mysql maybe you can mount it on some other path inside the other container so now this is our volume and the driver is local we are not using any shared san we are not using any nfs so the docker engine will know that we will write this file locally any confusion in this file Harshida, I'm starting from you. You are getting this, my, uh, the volumes concept. Uh, can you explain this last one? Uh, is that... Drivers? No, no, like, oh, uh, no, no. in volumes. this volume, right? Uh, yeah, yes. volumes. Okay. Volumes is a predefined uh, field that you can define the volumes we discussed about the Docker volumes and we said that we are using the named volume and I am giving my volume a name. This can be MySQL data and you, or you can say, I mean, I use MySQL data. You can say it. Uh, MySQL. Okay. I have not pressed. Okay. We can give any name, right? It's not like uh, the. Okay, let me undo it. I don't know. Oh, no. It is fine. So we can give it any name. I was actually writing MySQL folder, but then I have to uh, use the same name here. Okay. So we can, we can why we are uh, giving it a, a name mysql data so that under my volumes i can search for mysql data because this is mysql databases data so logically i thought it should be mysql data i mean you can say mysql folder you can say whatever you want but this is very specific this is the path where mysql configuration and databases will go mm -hmm. Apache, we have just did it uh, that we will take the image, we will take the container name, we will do uh, ports will be 8080 and this volumes. Maybe. We have another volume. S H A R E D shared drive. I think, and we can say Apache. I'm slam shiny problem. Okay, so let's say Apache has some var share, you have some custom application and there is a directory inside your container var share and you want, uh, want to mount it on your local file system. So you define it here and you use it here and whatever is written inside a container on this path will be written on our local machine the host with the starting name of shared drive so you it is easy for you to search for it right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you're not clear mm -hmm. so what's wrong what is so confusing? Uh, should we go on the explaining the volumes again or you are uh, not uh, 
Yeah, I'm still confused, Jishan. Unconfused on the volume types or how we assign the volumes? How we assign the volumes. Okay, I will undo, skip. I will undo anything, everything. So that file becomes less complex. We have this MariaDB container and we have used it. <laughs> Correct? Yeah, yeah. Excuse me. Actually, my throat is dry. Anyways. <clears throat> so we did it yesterday. We are yeah. making a container. What we are telling is there is a database running inside a container. Okay. Leave everything. Docker run uh, Maria DB. Oh, it's that all the environment variable. So we had done that. So our container is running in Docker PS. This is our Docker name. Docker, actually I was thinking to go on this topic on the end. Docker exit minus interactive terminal bin bash so we are you see the the it is changed from localhost ww to what the container, container id, ID. Mm -hmm. so we are inside oh, we are the in container. container then okay so we have var lib and mysql so this is our database path when we create a database, that database is created on this path. Every change, every data is written on this path. But when we restart a container, this path is not persistent. So what we want to do is we want to mount this path inside a container to the to your host physical path. Mm -hmm. Physical path means I can exit from here. It will be var lib docker volumes. Okay, this is my physical path where the docker is generating some hash. And inside that hash, it is using underscore data. And there are our files. But when we will restart the container, everything is gone. So this is automatical way, but how do we know? This is a very complex file name. I mean, how you can tell that it is for your this Docker container, it is for your that Docker container, you cannot recognize by just seeing the file. So what we want to do is we want to name it like MySQL data. I have just, I ran that command because I was testing the code. So it created a directory MySQL data. So if I go into it will, I can see it that is my, it, I have used this name in my inside my YAML file and this is the data. And if I go into underscore data, cd mysql, okay, find dot minus name, exam, 
yes dot example it is there right why i cannot see it minus minus l yes one for so this is our folder example and db is available so we created i created that database for testing and i mean i wanted to do it again but this is the mapping mm -hmm. so whatever okay. is written here when the docker will restart so the name should be instead of using these names i am giving this name my sql data so that i can easily recognize when i come to this place and when i come to the volumes i can see that the this is my path so if something happens or if i want to check something or if uh, uh i mean for any purpose the the path is persistent and i know that this is my path so now I can go back to my var www. I can go to my YAML file. And this is the volume inside the Docker. We have just checked it and it is mounted on my SQL data. We just tell it the name and Docker will automatically mount it under var lib Docker volumes. I mean, this path is maybe different for, I was telling you this path, maybe different for, um, Mac and maybe different for Windows. Of course, definitely different for Windows uh, because it starts with C and program files. So this is the volume name, Varli MySQL. So if I am running an, an application, so the two containers want to share data. So we will define data here. And that we can use that at multiple places. That's what I was telling you, but don't don't listen. You have heard nothing. So we are just saying that this is my SQL data. I have defined it here and used it here. That's it. You take it that way. Mm -hmm. So now if we want to run it, docker dash compose minus F, Apache PHP ML at minus T. Okay. Already in container is running. Docker PS minus A. I mean, if we do with the YAML, we don't have to delete and create everything. Because, so that's a better way, but I have created this container just to explain you, Docker RM. So working with Docker file, this uh, YAML file is better than uh, doing everything manually. So now we are good. Up minus T. And now if I would do curl local hosts port 80 connected successfully. Why it is connected successfully? Because I have created a test database before. I have created the username password. And when my, I deleted everything, I created everything, it is again taking the data from the same directory and our application is connecting successfully. 